Okay. All right, so the topic of today's presentation is basically the differences between Lava XV and Lava Flex. Um, as you're all aware, we use these, both of these sequences in both abdominal and pelvic imaging. Uh, but mainly the, the purpose of this goal today is to understand the difference of why we use one over the other um, in each particular area of the body. Uh, so first we want to start off with what is lava and then um, we'll go into lava XV and lava flux. And so, um, oh how'd that get there? Never mind. Uh, so that's lava. Alright, so we'll start with uh, just a lava sequence in general. Um, and so here it is. So basically, lava is a 3D FSPGR, or not F, SPGR sequence. Um, it'll automatically use partial KZ filling technique and special technique. Um, so basically, the reason that we use this is what this is essentially doing. It's going to give us a relatively quick fat stat sequence. Um, that acceleration portion coming from that filling technique, and then the special technique is going to give us our fat saturation. Um, so that's kind of just the overall broad application of lava and then um, the lava XV and the lava flexes is the offset um, off of each one of those. Alright, so for the next couple of slides here, the next two slides, um, they're just basically going to be kind of almost like a Venn diagram as for the lava XV, lava flex, where they're used um, and how one benefits over the other. Along with at the last uh, about four or five slides, there are going to be some examples um, for the images themselves, and that way we can all kind of have an idea of what exactly we're looking at when we're talking about lava XV versus lava flex. Um, so as you can see, regions that they're used essentially we're only using the lava XV in the in the liver, and we're using the lava flex in the pelvis. Um, and so I just kind of want to make it brief and pretty concise as far as information that's here. That way, once it's uploaded into um, up to I guess YouTube and wherever, whether we disperse it in email or add it to um, maybe one of our teams teams Outlook folder. Um, that way, so rather than me having notes and just kind of talking about it, you'll have access to the to the information there immediately. Um, so basically, we use Lava XV over Lava Flex for improved fat sat in the liver. Um, Kind of bouncing off of there down to the bottom as far as the T1 weighting. Now that I've realized, I should have brought that back up to the top. Uh, so when we in the lava flex images, it's actually T1 weighting is actually sort of decreased in that compared to the in, compared to the lava flex. Um, sorry, I said that backwards. The lava flex imaging decreases the contrast in the liver between the arterial enhancing lesions and the background liver. And that's the reason that we use the lava XV over the lava flex because that's the downside of lava flex is that we aren't getting that, that T1 weighting. So after administration of contrast, the radiologists aren't able to properly determine uh, or more accurately determine whether or not there's an actually an enhancing lesion there in the liver um, or not, or if it's just a shadow just kind of some kind of obscurity that they can't tell. Uh, one nice thing about Lava XV against Lava Flex as well is that Lava XV is a shorter sequence test scan that we kind of did the other day. Um, it was different about six seconds. So it, it is a shorter acquisition compared to the longer 21 seconds, but there's a reason for that. Uh, for the Lava XV, we're only getting a fat sat sequence, Whereas for our lava flex, we are getting four pictures basically in one. So when we when we run that, we're getting the in and out of phase, we're getting our water water only, and then our fat only. So that's why whenever you acquire those images, that's why you get uh, like let's say series five, five, 500, 501, and then in phase, out of phase, and that's why all of those come up. Um, which also um, which also benefit the radiologist in the areas that they are looking for. Um, here, kind of as I said, as far as the acquisition time and the coverage in the liver, closer to the diaphragm as opposed to the pelvis, you're more susceptible to motion artifact there in the liver, unlike the pelvis, which is another reason why lava flex is used instead, just because you aren't susceptible to that. And if we go ahead and continue here, one of the big differences 
I would say probably the biggest difference, um, probably the best difference between the two is the fat saturation, the way that they saturate fat for each sequence altogether. Um, in Lava XV, we're just using our spectral fat saturation as opposed to a two-point Dixon technique. Um, so as you're all aware, oftentimes, especially like for breast imaging, where you have to manually uh, manually keep track of your of your fat and water peaks, so you make sure you saturate what you want to saturate, which is fat. Um, Lava XV doing that manually for you usually works out pretty well. The fat saturation, it's using a two-point Dixon technique, though the two-point Dixon technique is. I would say by far superior. And we have um, some, Im some images here at the end with, with some examples. It's a little more homogenous as far as the uh, fat sat and uh, the, the fat saturation for it. I, I feel like it just looks better. It's just nice and dark as opposed to just not. Uh. But then of course they are both susceptible to artifacts. Uh, the Flava the Flex very frequently, very frequently can have a pixel swap artifact uh, where it's going to, when, when running the two point Dixon technique calculation uh, in the post processing portion, that fat and water is inverted. So basically, well, I have a couple examples here at the end and, and even an example of a patient that we did yesterday where it was kind of perfect timing that I was getting those set of pictures which I'll show you here. Um, I couldn't find, I couldn't get one for the Lava XV artifact, uh, but most oftentimes, a lot of you probably come up with, um, when you have a, you typically happen more common in larger patients, you kind of get those kind of bands coming in throughout the, the side. So that's usually one of the most typical artifacts that you get with Lava XV. <clears throat> the calibration, there isn't really calibration used for the Lava XV as far as the asset scan. That asset scan is more likely being used for other sequence unless the Lava XV has pure, um, pure selected for it. And then it would need to use the asset. But it uses its own self-calibrating parallel imaging technique during the pre-scan itself, right before that image sets. Um, whereas the ARC, whereas the Lava Flex, it's using ARC to reduce those related related parallel imaging artifacts, just as I stated, that you can sometimes get in the Lava XV that I unfortunately don't have a um, have an example of. So those are kind of the main differences that I felt were most important between these two sequences. Um, even though they're both lavas, some derivative of a lava, they definitely benefit one over the other over certain situations. And one of my examples here at the end will really demonstrate that for us. And I kind of drive that home. And so sort of as I mentioned before, so each time the Lava XV is going to be on the left, and we're going to have our Lava Flex on our right. So we only get got that one sequence, that one set of images of the Lava XV on the left, but we run a, what was that, six second longer, longer acquisition, you'll have your water, fat, you'll have in phase and out phase, out of phase sequence. It was kind of a four and one there. <clears throat> so here's kind of what I was saying as far as the um, the fat satur saturation. It's a little more homogenous, I'd say, as far as when you look at the anterior portion of the abdomen there. Um, that just kind of gives us an example, but when we look there actually physically in the liver itself, it's, that area is all pretty well saturated. One thing that I thought was kind of important to note, to note um, as far as the differences between the two is with Lava Flex, you do have an increase in, in SNR, and you can, it's kind of hard to tell here on the PowerPoint um, or there on the projector, uh, but uh, our SNR is a little better on that right side than the left. The left side is actually a little grainier when you actually bring it up in packs and compare the two between each other. And so these are all the same patient. This is that, that patient that we had yesterday. Um, <clears throat> so I guess before we go into that image itself,
So one of the reasons, so this uses the Dixon-based method as far as fat set, sort of basically just like ideal, which is why we sometimes have those, those pixel swap issues, and which is why we usually have better fat saturation in, um, in those ideal sequences along with here, the ideal flex, because we're actually using that, that method as opposed to the spectral saturation where here, when with that patient who had that posterior, uh, who had that that um, spinal hardware there, when try to fat sat, it just did not look as well as that other side. And these are exact copy coverage, copy slice, thickness, field of view, everything. And so you can really tell the difference here between your fat saturation in that area. Um, here, I mean, this was a this exam itself was actually eovis liver, so. We aren't really looking at the kidneys, the, the contrast or the uh, fat saturation doesn't matter a whole lot there. But then when we brought this to, we, we decided, uh, the tech who was running the scan decided we should actually, <clears throat> excuse me, run this uh, by a radiologist called the, call the body fellow. He took a look at it, he said, uh, we said, this patient has hardware, we're getting better fat saturation with our lava flex over the lava XV. Is there one that you would prefer for us to run? Um, and basically what happened after after he took a look at it, he was taking a look at the lesions. Even though the lesions that they were looking for in this abdomen was more anterior, um, he felt that there may potentially be something there more in the posterior section as well. And for the sake of better fat saturation, we should use the lava flex. So I would urge you that if you ever come across something like this where somebody has some spinal hardware and you're really noticing this going on in the lava XV, potentially run, you can run a lava flex see if it turns out any better, um, which it probably will just like in this situation because it used that Dixon based technique. Um, we'll run it by the radiologist, see if they will prefer that we do the ideal flex, then we'll just do the ideal flex. Um, and as I mentioned, this, this was actually a Uvis liver protocol. And so when they said do, do the uh, lava flex, smart prep was actually not a good option. Um, it would not allow us to use smart prep. So I believe, uh, I believe they just he just went ahead and ran a I don't know what delay they ran on it, but I think he just ran a manual delay. Uh, but just kind of one thing to note there is as far as if there's hardware and we could potentially make it better, then always do so. <clears throat> and so this one here, kind of as we said before, uh, that artifact, you're, you're getting some pixel swap artifact right there in that posterior dome ridge of the, of the liver there. Um, and like I said, in this particular case, the lesion where they were actually looking at was more anterior. So in this case, that little segment there wasn't that, it wasn't that big of a deal that we missed it, um, but just kind of gives you an idea of, of the kind of artifact that you'll get in that actual area. Uh, along with this, I think this very last slide is going to have a even worse artifact where I'll just flip to it here. And this artifact here, where basically that whole <coughs> kidney, it's that whole kidney is inverted. So in our water, in our water sequence here, where water is supposed to be bright and <clears throat> excuse me, and and fat supposed to be nulled out. It is, and it's actually reversed. And the same thing there in the fat, um, in that fat sequence. And kind of one other thing I wanted to mention as far as uh, the whole Dixon-based technique as well. I definitely have encountered this as well in the ideal imaging of a C-spine one time when the residents gave us a call. Um, I was wondering, hey, what's going on? Why is this? Why are we getting this kind of weird artifact? And so we just told me yeah, it was just pixel swap and patience. And usually kind of as I showed here, when there's hardware involved, it's more likely to happen. And with that C-spine that that resident had us look at, um, that patient had some kind of a, they, they had braces, they had braces. So really kind of threw off a portion of the cord. Um, so you can definitely, it's more, I, it's more than likely to happen with patients with hardware. And uh, that's that's it for Lava XV.